So Mick make mail number 16. We've got an unknown package. We've got a contact grill, of course. And another one which is really cool. It's an SBC. So let's crack them open and see what's inside them. So I think uh, first of all I'll do this contact grill because it's, it may seem a bit boring. Now the reason why I bought this one is because it's a smart contact grill. Now one of the reasons why I wanted to get a smart contact grill is because uh, it has pretty much all the electronics inside to be able to add a, an ESP8266. So it's pretty basic, like it's from Kogan, it's the cheapest thing I could possibly get. So my intent is to uh, crack this open completely, chuck in a little ESP8266 and turn this in into a, a really smart uh, contact grill. So it seems to be running um, an HT1621 uh, chip, Holtec chip. Okay, so this is a, co a fairly common uh, LCD driver. Uh, there should be another another chip in here maybe it's uh, back in here but that's good news the fact that it is running this chip uh, it's probably running at 3.3 volts uh, which means it'll be able to power up a, a small uh, ESP32 uh, so that's all I'm going to look at at the moment uh, so stay tuned for that video uh, when I connect up a little ESP into this one now the next one uh, this is an SBC you remember the Pine 64 guys well, the Pi64 guys have come out with another SBC uh, called the Rock 64. So, um, of course, oh, this is fantastic! Check this out. Now, I think pretty much all my mail bags I have ever had, um, they've given me either this sort of plug, or this sort of plug, or this sort of plug. Well, look at this. Already I'm impressed by these Pine64 guys. They've actually bothered to switch it over to an Aussie uh, connector. So um, in the, if you would have seen my Pine64 review, uh, I didn't give them a good wrap. Uh, there were a lot of issues with the Pine64. One of my subscribers um, wrote to the Pine64 guys and recommended they send me out a review unit of the Rock 64. So the Rock 64 um, is a departure from the Pine64 um, it's fairly similar sort of format to a Raspberry Pi. Where's my Raspberry Pi when you need one? Hang on, let's compare it. So the Rock 64 is pretty much the same size as a standard Raspberry Pi. Um, everything is pushed out in the same uh, same format. So the Rock 64 will be able to actually connect straight into a, a standard Raspberry Pi case. Uh, a couple of differences, of course. Uh, there's an infrared on the end. Uh, which might cause some cases not to fit. The micro USB on the Raspberry Pi has been changed to a DC jack, which is far superior than uh, the micro USB. Physically, everything is lined up, so it's the same as a Raspberry Pi. However, the ROCK 64 uh, has uh, an RK3328 64-bit quad-core A53. They claim it can run 4K HDMI out, which is nice. Um, you've got a couple of extra buttons uh, like power on, power off, reset, um, changing the boot sequence. Uh, you've also got an EMMC module socket, which is really nice. You've got gigabit ethernet, which is even better, USB 3.0, uh, and you've also got an additional uh, Pi GPO connector. So this is a standard Pi GPO, this is an additional connector. So what else? Um, everything else is pretty much identical. Oh, it, it can handle up to 4 gigs um, of uh, DDR3 RAM, uh, which is really nice. Um, 128 meg SPI flash. So this will be a really nice board to run a review video on. Uh, it's a shame they couldn't fit in uh, MIPI DSI and MIPI CSI, as exists on a Raspberry Pi, but I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue, uh, considering uh, the advantage is you get USB 3, which is really nice. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what sort of speeds we get out of it. So that's a nice one. Um, and I have to say thank you very much to the Pine64 guys for sending me this review model. Um, 
I'm confident, uh, just by looking at a couple of forums, I'm confident that uh, the ROC 64 is actually doing quite well. But I haven't really had a look at it in depth, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, thanks very much. Okay, on to the next thing. Okay, so this next one, I think this one came from Texas Instruments. Uh, and if it is, this would be really cool. So these, I just couldn't pass up this one. If you saw my weekly roundup, uh, I mentioned a DLP 2000, which is a display module that normally sold for about 400 bucks. Uh, and TI have actually reduced the price down to $99. So I couldn't resist, I bought two of them. So this is the evaluation model for the DLP 2000. It's called the DLP Lightcraft and it's supposed to fit onto a beagle bone. What it does is it projects a 640 by 360 uh, pixel resolution uh, image onto whatever you want. It's not flash, but uh, it's enough for one of my projects that I wanted to do. So at $400 a pop, they were far too expensive for what I had in mind. Uh, but at $99, yeah, they're actually, they're actually fairly reasonable. So it's basically a projector that displays an image, um, but it's not a f it's not a very uh, bright projector. It's just enough to see in a darkened room. So let's fire this up and see what it looks like. So after a bit of searching, I managed to find my old beagle bone. It's a fairly old one. Uh, in fact, I'm not sure if it actually works or not. Uh, so I'll need to just fire it up and see how it goes. Um, but essentially it fits straight onto this like actually no I think it's like this fairly sure it's like this and it'll just project an image onto whatever you want it to project onto so let's fire up my beagle bone okay so for some reason my beagle bone black uh, seems to have just died I don't know what it is that's a real bugger so I won't be able to actually test it out which is a real shame. Uh, all it does is just light up the little green light. None of these activity lights actually show up. Ah, pest. Okay, let's just uh, fire it up. Uh, the DLP is supposed to just display a, a welcome screen, so I'll just um, add some DC power and see what it actually shows up. So I've got my handy dandy uh, bench power supply um, set to 5 volts. The DLP actually requires about 3 amps, so it's a fair amount of juice. Um, so let's plug it in. I hope it's centered positive. And I'll see how we go. Oh, and it comes up straight away. Nice. Uh, let's actually dim the lights and see what it looks like. So I've turned off my studio lights and it's coming up fairly bright. Uh, these are just the uh, overhead lights that I'm using. So let's turn those off and see what it looks like. Uh, so this is a nighttime shot, which is you know, fairly bright, but it's not bright enough. So basically my application, I'll be using it to shine uh, information onto the roof uh, in my bedroom while I'm asleep uh, and it'll uh, be tied into my alarm clock um, that I made and it'll be able to show you information like you know, current uh, song that's playing, um, calendar events and things like that. So when my alarm clock wakes me up it'll shine on the ceiling, um, list of events that are going to be happening uh, for the day and where I have to be. So that, this will be good and you know even with uh, lights on it's, it's still fairly visible. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. The downside is there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, no drivers exist except for BeagleBone Black. I have to write my own drivers for um, ESP32. This is fantastic. Looking forward to this. While I was going through my weekly uh, mail bag segment, uh, someone rang the doorbell. Hang on, let's see who it is. There he is. <laughs> G'day, Matt. How you going? G'day, mate. How's things? Good. So what's uh so what brings you here? Uh, this neighborhood? I need a Raspberry Pi. Excellent. Alright, I'll go and get your uh, Raspberry Pi for you. Cool. 
Um, and uh, I think uh, Matt, you're probably going to help me with uh, this uh, mailbag segment. Oh, I've been roped in. <laughs> Excellent. So Matt was here to pick up a Pi 3 that my uh, son graciously uh, lent him. Actually, not a lend, it's actually a keep, isn't it? It's a keep. Excellent. Well, have uh, fun with that. We're going to do yeah, it. Yeah, I've got a Wan Hao uh, D7 I need to hook this up to because oh, yeah. I don't want to tether the laptop to it and waste, you know, five hours of laptop time. Oh, yeah, fair enough. It. It's got a HDMI socket. Yeah. It's got to drive the screen. It's yeah. It's kind of strange. Excellent. All right. Mm. Uh, so I was in the middle of uh, just programming this uh, NRF uh, 52. But I think um, I've got something in the mail, so do you want to crack open this uh, mailbag? Um, I've, yeah, I think I know what it is. Um, it's a Volx PC. Okay. So I was just looking uh, through some of the emails. Um, uh, well, this fellow called Vassant, who uh, contacted me uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, Is it anything so, like the seed pie top things? Uh, similar. But it's supposed to be a full desktop, so I don't know what he's given me. Uh, it may be a uh, full on sort of desktop PC thingy. Uh, or it may not be. Oh, yeah, look at that. So that must, what's that, the Mini TV box. All so, right. Yeah, it's an all in one unit. So it's based on the iDroid C2. Do you want to fire it up and see how it goes? Plug it in. Yep, plug it in. Where's the power? Oh, travel adapters. Bleh. Well, look, we can go to from America to UK, and now we can go. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably just I've five. actually got a I've actually got a workaround for that. Um, my pliers I tend to massacre uh, these things just by bending the pins. That's one way of doing it. But yeah, see, this is this plastic is fairly rigid plastic, so it's not going to give. <laughs> I can just see it. So if I try and bend these, That's so you say seems legit. <laughs> <laughs> seems legit. All right, so uh, what's what's the voltage? I need my glasses. Ethernet, five volts, two amps. Excellent. I've got one of those. Let's um, crack open the bench power supply. This is what we want. Perfect. One of these attached to a bench power supply, and let's see if I can produce some blue blue genie smoke. Okay. Eh? <laughs> Leave the smoke in. Okay. Let's just turn it off. Uh, make sure we've got. You don't want to go flying in with inrush current. Now, I wonder, yeah, that's right. Now, I wonder what's the, usually it's the outside, it's going to be the uh, ground. Inside is the is the uh, positive. Um, yeah, center pause. Center pause, excellent. That's what I like to see. But you never can tell with some of these things. Let's go chuck that in there. Uh, Ethernet, let's chuck Ethernet in. Oh, it doesn't have Wi-Fi. Um, it probably does, but I find Ethernet's just so much quicker. Or is that a Bluetooth dongle? <coughs> uh, this is, oh, this is for the keyboard. Yeah, okay. Let's power it on. No lights or anything. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Oh, it's showing uh, a boot up. Volks PC. Okay. Ich bin in German. Yeah. It's come from a German guy, is it? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty speedy, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. Now, why isn't my mouse working? My mouse isn't working. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Oh, man, that's really speedy, isn't it? It's sort of not up uh, refreshing the screen quick enough yeah. to see where you're Look gone. Man, what's going on? Um, I suspect it's probably churning away in the background doing something. I want a shell. Give me a shell. There we go. Uh, root password, I've been told, is root. Ah, excellent. So, the whole idea with uh, Volx PC is that it um, it runs Linux as a base baseline, but it also runs uh, Android on top. So you get the best of both worlds. So you've got okay. a Linux desktop, and I just uh, SU'd into desktop, right. and it started this up, as, obviously, as part of the startup script, so you've got all the access to, you know, Google Play, and everything else. So this is now the Android side of things. Right. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool actually. I uh, wonder if I can go to, this looks like World Wide Web. And get to Google, nice, nice to see. Who should we look up? M3SCA1. Looks like a good, um, oh look at this guy, who's this guy? 
Don't know. Oh yeah, look. This looks like a pretty good channel actually. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wonder who this guy is. <laughs> I think I was watching last night and he unboxed a D7. Bit of a live stream there. Yeah, unfortunately I don't, got it. don't, don't have audio because I've got oh, a problem yeah. with my... What's the, the company that makes the game capture? HD. HD60S or something. Right. I can't get any audio. All, all I'm getting is this, this fuzz. Looks like a static image to me. Oh, there we go. Here oh, comes man. the big knife. What's this? <laughs> Gotta have a big knife when you're having an epic unbox. No, I don't tell you, you are hitting mm -hmm. this thing up or something, eh? It's like that knife looks like the one off. Um, what's that? Um, that? Well, I heat the knife up to. Oh, oh bloody red hot knife. Red how many people <laughs> jumped on that stupid idea? It was like, how many ways can we use a fidget spinner? <laughs> This looks like, this isn't high def though, is it? This is no. looking looking like 480p to yeah, me. Yeah, that's because the stream was bad. There's another guy that um, I sometimes watch. Who's that bloke? I don't know. Some guy. Oh look, Upward. You know, I managed to get a lot of uh, hits on this, this Upward. Raspberry Pi killer. <laughs> Who would think that's a Raspberry Pi killer? It's just an Upward. I remember that did well for you, though. Yeah, it did well. It had 400, almost 500,000 uh, hits. I think it's all about the, the words, pie killer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I mean, look, it's working quite well. It's keeping up with it. Um, Turn there's no audio. So, what do you reckon? Did you get one of these? No. Okay. I've already got crap plugged into the TV. Yeah, fair enough. You know? If you want to run Linux, and Android mm. at the same time, it's pretty good. Well, it's certainly good for, you know, those that don't have like an Apple box or something like that. And they, yep. I'm sure you could stream all sorts of content to it. Yep. You could probably Netflix on it. Um, unfortunately, I don't have anything else. I checked the mailbox this morning and there was nothing much there. Cool. All right, excellent. Thanks for, uh, very much for those things. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for unboxing that thing. That was all good. So uh, now that Matt has left, I'm just uh, playing around uh, with uh, this Volx PC a bit more uh, and this little icon down here um, is the one that uh, starts up Android um, and you can just click on this little icon and you fire up Android uh, straight in but I don't know how to actually exit out of Android uh, you're sort of stuck in here I'm sure there's a way of doing it but I certainly can't do it I can you know, go to the file manager and everything else but um, you know I can't really do anything else with it okay so cracking it open normally I'd use a guitar pick uh, but I don't know where my guitar picks are at the moment, so I just have to make do with a screwdriver Okay, so there we have it the insides of it it Looks like he's got a, a small PCB style uh, aerial uh, for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth this is one part of the memory of the uh, two gigs. Uh, this would be the other other part, two gigs. Uh, of course, it's the AM Logic 6905. Uh, this is 16 gigs eMMC. Uh, so it's a fairly sparse board. Uh, most of the peripherals, uh, USB, SD, is all handled by the AM Logic S905. Um, it's also got a standard Wi-Fi chip on it, uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It'd be nice to have access to some of the GPIOs, but it looks like there's a some sort of programming header here maybe it's UART serial or something I might just try some of the tracks out and see if I can find out what those are I think if I was making a board like this I would at least add uh, some sort of header where I could uh, potentially add uh, some sort of enhancement to it like you know SPI or ITC anything like that the only sort of gripe is this heatsink is a solid steel heatsink I would have put in aluminium, but I guess it all comes down to cost. Um, it certainly makes the board a lot heavier and feel a bit more substantial. So I soldered a uh, small header to these pins, to these pads. So I'll, I'll chuck my logic analyzer on it and see what we're getting out of it. So I just powered it on, I'm certainly seeing uh, some data coming out of it. So it looks very much like a uh, serial port. Uh, this will be this, the console coming up. In terms of the order, it goes ground, TX, um, probably RX, and then I don't know what the other one is. It's probably, um, it's sitting at ground, so I don't know what the other one is. It could be a reset line, maybe, possibly. But look, all in all, it's 
it's a fairly good product. Um, if you want to be able to run uh, both Linux and Android at the same time, then yeah, you get one of these. Um, and, and for the price, I think it's fairly good. So there you have it. So before we go, there's one special item I picked up from a dumpster dive. And this is, wait for it, an FLIR module. This is really cool. These are normally about uh, 500 bucks. Now it was in a reject um, pile, so it probably won't work. But I'm gonna give it a whirl and see if I can actually get something out of it. Let's fire it up and see how we go. So I connected up um, the FLIR module to uh, Raspberry Pi and downloaded uh, the demo code and I can't believe it. This FLIR module was actually in a dings and dents and they claimed it wasn't working. So, I mean, look, it's, it seems to be working. Um, you can see all the hot areas around my face, my nose and my ears, uh, the, the cool, cool areas. Uh, this is fantastic. This is an absolutely fantastic find. Uh, so I might uh, build a, a small, um, I don't know, uh, sort of heat, heat detector out of it. All right, so that's about it. Um, a whole bunch of cool stuff uh, this week. Um, and a whole lot of stuff I need to code up for, especially the uh, DLP module. Anyway, thanks for watching, and see you next week.